this video, I thought I would kind of walk you through some of the big picture concepts that you'll learn starting from algebra and all the math that you have to learn to uh, get ready for calculus. So we're going to just take a quick look at uh, algebra and all the courses that you have to take in order to kind of be fully ready to take uh, an actual calculus course. So if this interests you, stick around. I think I could do this in about 15 minutes and we're gonna just take a look at the main ideas uh, that are taught for the most part for most students in each of these respective courses. Okay, so I've got about 15 minutes and all I wanna do is just give you some general sense uh, for those of you out there that are you know, wondering, hey, what math do you have to take in order to start from algebra? And algebra or algebra one is the most kind of typical math course that students uh, would take, like, let's say at the ninth grade high school level, right? So then they would move on uh, and generally, no, I'm speaking in generality, but this is uh, most people's track here. So as a freshman in high school, you start off in um, algebra or algebra one. Then in, as a sophomore, 10th grade, you move on to geometry. Then in the 11th grade, uh, you uh, would take algebra two. And then uh, for those students that really want to, you know, get ready uh, for college level mathematics, you can opt in to like a pre-calculus course. There's other options uh, for most students. Now, I will say this, uh, the majority of high school students have to at least uh, get through these uh, uh, courses here, algebra, geometry, algebra two. Okay. Even if you're not going to college, generally speaking. All right. So this is a pretty typical track for almost all students. Uh, Pre-calculus is only going to really be there for those students who are um, definitely going to college. There's other uh, math that you could take, or maybe you don't even have to take a math class, maybe business math, uh, consumer math, statistics, or whatnot. But if you're looking to take calculus, you want to take pre-calculus, right? This is definitely um, a challenging course. And then you would move on finally to calculus as a uh, freshman uh, in college. This is a very typical uh, kind of track. So these are the courses here that we're going to look at and just take a quick peek at what you learn in each of these, right? And I'm talking about a very fast overview. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about algebra. So what do you learn in a basic algebra, algebra one course? Well, let's just kind of go through some main concepts here. All right. So first of all, you're going to be reviewing all the basics, uh, stuff like what's a variable, uh, the order of operations, all that kind of stuff from middle school and pre-algebra, real numbers, i.e. positive and negative numbers. You definitely have to know how to solve equations, what we call linear equations. You got to know how to graph lines. You got to know how to find the equation of lines, systems of linear equations. By the way, anything I mention here, if you have, you don't really know, or if you're struggling with, uh, check out my respective courses. Uh, just follow the uh, links in the description. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on all these topics uh, on my YouTube channel. Okay, but we're just kind of highlighting the main kind of chapters in these courses. Let's go ahead and continue on. Uh, inequalities, okay, you need to learn this in Algebra 1, absolute value, uh, inequalities, equations, powers, and exponents. You can see it's quite a bit of material. Uh, polynomials, how to add polynomials, subtract, multiply, factoring polynomials, quadratic equations, quadratic formula, uh, functions, relations, domain, range. Then you got rational expressions and equations, which is a, a pretty big deal right here. Got to learn how to find the lowest common denominator of rational functions, which is not exactly that easy. Well, it's not overly difficult, but it tends to confuse a lot of students. Then you get into radical equations um, and uh, expressions and equations and extraneous roots. And then, then you uh, have, uh, generally speaking, in most algebra courses, a data component, right? You're going to learn about frequency charts and averages, mean, median, mode, and basic probability and counting theory. So this is quite a bit of stuff you have to learn in Algebra 1. And what, uh, you know, I've taught all these courses for decades. What I tend to um, found out or uh, tend to see is that how you do in Algebra 1 is going to affect, you know, pretty much the rest of how it's going to go uh, for your um, high school, you know, or your prerequisites to get to calculus. Okay, so if you're struggling, let's suppose you're taking pre-calculus or calculus, and you're having a tough time, there's a good chance that maybe you didn't do as well in Algebra 1 
as you, uh, you know, uh, should have um, done, right? And there's a lot of reasons for it. Maybe you were distracted. Maybe, you know, you didn't understand your teacher. But I'm telling you right now, Algebra 1 is an absolutely critical uh, course to master because it really lays the foundations for all, you know, the rest of the mathematics you're going to have to learn. Now, let's move into geometry. Now, high school level geometry is far, you know, when I say geometry, a lot of students are like, oh, you're going to find the area and volume and triangles. Well, high school level geometry is a lot more than that. Okay, you do learn a lot and you have to, uh, you know, really get your geometry down at, you know, when you take a high school level geometry course, because you're not going to see these topics again until you, you know, get into, let's say, more advanced math in college. But let's just do a quick overview, right? So in geometry, you're going to be learning a lot about points, lines, planes, all the notations and properties that go with that, okay, which is a, a lot. Uh, reasoning and proof, that's a big thing in geometry. Deductive reasoning, uh, logic, you know, what's a postulate, what's a theorem, how do you uh, create or write a geometric proof. Uh, another thing is, uh, and this is a generally like a, a chapter in and of itself, is perpendicular and parallel lines. Okay, all the properties and uh, theorems and postulates there, transversals, alternate interior angles, all this stuff. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you will learn this, um, or you, if you want to learn it, you can take my course or another course. But again, this is what you're going to have to learn in uh, high school level geometry. Then you have congruent triangles and a lot about triangles and geometry. And you would, you know, you know, a triangle is just one shape. But, uh, you know, you might say, well, why do we just obsess over triangles? Well, triangles are extremely important. And you're going to learn a lot of, uh, about the properties of triangles, congruent triangles, similar triangles. A lot to learn about triangles. Okay, so um, another topic you're going to get into is quadrilaterals and uh, polygons. Okay, so that's a four-sided polygon, and there's all different types, trapezoid, rhombus, et cetera, et cetera. You probably heard some of these terms. Then you're going to get into similarity, okay, and that's another big topic that you're going to have to master. Uh, transformations, that has to deal with rotations, dilations, reflections, right? So if you see yourself... You know, in the mirror, right, you're looking at a reflection of yourself. And if you kind of like, you know, take an, uh, an object and rotate it 90 degrees, what does that object look like? This is what we call transformations. OK, and there's uh, a few different types. And then you're going to get into more stuff about triangles to include right triangles, special right triangles, which is uh, kind of leads you into basic trigonometry. So you really uh, have an introduction to trigonometry in geometry, okay? So like things like sine, cosine, tangent, of course, right triangles. You're going to learn about the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, uh, et cetera. So if you're kind of flabbergasted right now, hey, listen, you know, this is a full year course and a lot to cover. Uh, let's go ahead and continue um, on. You're going to learn a lot about circles, okay? Much more than just finding the area or circumference. You're going to learn about arcs, chords, inscribed uh, angles. There's a lot you need to know about circles. And then finally, you do get into area and volume and sector area and arc length, all this kind of good stuff. So, you know, lots to learn in geometry, okay? So typically, most students are going to take Algebra 1 and Geometry in this order. Let's take a look at this right here. Uh, you would want to take these courses in this order because in your 11th grade year, you want to have these courses done so you can be ready for uh, tests like the SAT and ACT, which is typically like 50-50 in terms of the algebra and geometry, or maybe like 60-40, a little bit more algebra than geometry on those exams. We want to get those out of the way, and you can see it's a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at Algebra 2. Well, in Algebra 2, you're pretty much going to be doing a review of Algebra 1. It's like everything in Algebra 1, which we saw is a lot, you're going to be kind of um, doing again. Okay, so, you know, it's, um, it's just more of the same, if you will. But then you're going to be introduced to new, uh, more um, advanced algebra uh, topics, things like matrices, determinants. Again, if you don't know what these things are, you'll certainly learn them. Uh, another big thing that's generally taught in most Algebra 2 uh, courses is logarithms, which are part of like exponential functions. Uh, that's generally like one chapter. 
Then you start learning uh, about advanced polynomial theorems, how to solve higher order uh, polynomial equations. So in Algebra 1, you solve things that are like uh, quadratic equations, right? Second degree polynomials. In Algebra 2, advanced polynomial equations, you start looking at like third or fourth or fifth degree polynomial uh, equations. And it's this is a whole nother kind of step up in uh, you know advanced algebra. There's a lot to learn there. And a lot of these topics are going to be continued in pre-calculus. You'll see this here in a second. Uh, and then you're going to get into sequence and series. You may or may not. It all depends. Um, most, I would say most Algebra 2 courses will introduce you to sequence and series. We're talking about arithmetic, geometric, infinite uh, geometric uh, sequence and series. And then you uh, will continue on at a higher level to learn more about uh, data, statistics, probability, uh, and the like. Okay, so a pretty big step up uh, from Algebra 1. Okay, but if you didn't do well in Algebra 1, well, guess what? You're going to have another chance to kind of learn it again in Algebra 2, all right? And then you're going to be learning, uh, obviously, much more advanced stuff. Okay, so let's move on to pre-calculus. So pre-calculus, um, uh, you know, really is where you're going to get your uh, advanced trigonometry, okay? And uh, pre-calculus, I would say a good third, uh, you know, one-third of the actual course is trigonometry. So you're talking like three or four chapters of trigonometry, tons of different uh, trigonometric concepts, trigonometric functions, uh, trigonometric identities, uh, polar equations, polar coordinates. Uh, this is a big, big deal, okay? You, and you're definitely going to need this for calculus. Another big uh, topic that you learn in pre-calculus, and sometimes you can find these in al Algebra 2 courses, like Algebra 2, Trigonometry. So there is some uh, kind of, uh, you know, overlap, all depending on your course. But another concept that you're going to get is what we call conic sections. So these uh, would have to uh, deal with shapes like circles, ellipses, uh, hyperbolas, um, even parabolas, right? You're saying, oh, I studied parabolas in Algebra 1. Well, not at this level, right? <laughs> it's much more advanced. Uh, so that's conic sections, really, really important stuff. And you're definitely going to get into more sequence and series, okay? Things like the binomial theorem. And, you know, this is a really important uh, topic to understand for calculus. And then some other, other things that you're going to see. And I'm just kind of breaking this out, uh, you know, permutations, combinations, prob more probability, you know, uh, solving counting uh, problems. Uh, this is important, okay? All, it's all important. But uh, again, you might have seen some of this uh, in your respective, uh, you know, Algebra 2 courses. And then more advanced algebra, right? Like, uh, you know, a bigger or more intense study of functions, um, even functions, odd functions, you know, analyzing domain, range, etc. All this stuff you need to know to be successful in calculus. And I'm not, I'm leaving stuff out here. I'm just kind of highlighting some big picture stuff. And then like advanced systems, all right? So uh, these would be like nonlinear systems or systems in three or four variables. So how do you deal with those? So um, again, I'm not including everything. I'm just trying to give you a sense of the kind of continuity between these courses. Okay, so if you're thinking, boy, you want to, uh, you know, get to calculus, well, you're going to have to know all this stuff, right? <laughs> it all, it's, it, everything kind of builds upon itself, and you're going to need it in calculus. So let's take a real, real fast look at a typical first semester of calculus. Now, calculus is broken up in all kinds of different ways. You have Calc 1, you can have Calc 2, you can have Calc 3. All depends on how your college or whatnot might teach it. But most people who might need to just take a basic calculus course, let's say if you're a business major, you don't have to go beyond that. Uh, so there's, you know, the more advanced levels of calculus or like multi-level or uh, multi-variable calculus. You know, these are for folks that are going to go on to become engineers, etc. But, you know, there is a lot of people, again, have to take just a basic one semester of calculus. OK, so what are some of the main ideas there? Well, you know, I'm just kind of highlighting again uh, some of the things. First thing is like limits. OK, so it's like, you know, the limit of uh, functions where things go to infinity, you're kind of studying the behavior of what happens when a number approaches infinity. This is a really big idea uh, to understand uh, the next topic, okay, uh, in calculus, which is derivatives. Uh, and derivatives are extremely important. Derivatives, 
um, or is basically what makes calculus calculus. It's, you know, it's such a cool concept when you really get it, but it has to deal with rate of change, finding tangent lines and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, you first have to understand the concept of limits. And before all that, you need to have strong, strong uh, algebra and advanced algebra skills and, and trigonometry skills. OK, because you'll be you're going to be using all that in this course. OK, so uh, this is just some of the basic notation that you'll see when you're working with derivatives. And then uh, the other half of an, um, a typical calculus course, you'll get into integration. It's this little crazy long symbol like this. It's called like an elongated S. And then it has to deal with finding the area of uh, curves, area and volumes of curves. It would look something like this. I'm just kind of making something up. So, you know, this is calculus, but calculus is such an awesome uh, topic because it solves problems that we're unable to solve uh, in with just, you know, uh, basic geometry and algebra. Okay, you need a new mathematics that uh, really kind of looks at rate of change and everything else like this. But you know, uh, for those of you out there that are thinking about taking calculus, you could be successful in it, all right? But you definitely have to have done pretty well. Not perfect. You don't have to have totally 100% aced pre-calculus to be uh, successful in calculus, but it will definitely help, all right? If you didn't do too strong in pre-calculus, suppose, you know, you know, you got like a C or a C plus, and you know you have to take calculus for your uh, your math class, okay, or your your major in college or whatnot, you definitely want to do some review before you get into that calculus course, okay? So, you know, brush up on your math before you take calculus. But anyways, yeah, uh, you know, I thought this would be interesting because uh, I know a lot of people out there just, you know, they wonder, you know, what kind of math, you know, do you have to take in order to get to this, you know, advanced, mysterious math called calculus. So hopefully this little video was interesting. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need help with any of these courses all the way up to pre-calculus, I'm going to leave the direct links in the description below. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.